It's Talking in Stations time. This is Today in EVE Online. It is September 26, 2019. That is a Thursday. And I should say, just so when people look back on this many years from now <laughs> and find this one episode, uh, they can pair it up with real life because a couple days ago, news broke about uh, our President Trump doing something. I don't remember what it was, but it's turned into an impeachment inquiry. So it looks like uh, some major political events are happening in the U.S. At the same time, you have stuff going on in England with Brexit. And it's uh, yeah, incredibly it's, dramatic. It's uh, the, the clowns are getting yanked from the stage. <laughs> the big uh, hook comes out and grabs it. Exactly. Like, okay, that's enough. Get out. <laughs> get out yeah so that's what's going on in the real world uh but let's check what's going on in eve online um there was a battle that happened we'll check eve source battle reports here uh skirmish broke out over an astro house and decline uh, in system J1AU TAC 9, Dead Coalition versus NC Dot and Friends. The Astro House belonged to UFC with NC Dot, helping defend against the Dead Co attack. And in the end, Dead Co came out on top, securing the objective and winning the ISK war. If I remember correctly, uh, I popped into comms for NC Dot and they were trying to gather. Uh, some forces and it just if it's the same battle i'm thinking of it was uh not a real strong showing from nc and the fcs were kind of saying like do you guys want to do this or not <laughs> so that's usually the case in nc there's usually something like that going on don't don't share what goes on inside the nc oh. that's up there. don't don't no, do it i don't all. care i don't care people should know what it's like being in these coalitions so they can decide if they want to be in them uh that's uh that's kind of what it, what it's about. The whole OPSEC thing makes it, makes that kind of, it just makes it too, um, too mysterious. Like you don't even know what's going on in there. I just imagine the, this comfy lounge with everyone seated and just smoking cigars and, and, and talking about good old days and um, no one's actually willing to stand up and do anything. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of close, I guess. No, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's usually actually quite empty. And then when something happens, there's a flurry of activity and that's usually what, that's usually how it goes. And then people wake up, join fleets, jump in there, do their thing. What's really neat in, in a, a group like NC, there's a ton of, um, a ton of expertise there and it's really neat to watch uh, people just know stuff and not not the stuff that is considered you know boundary of exploit kind of stuff but they just know what they're doing so they get in there and they just you know assemble themselves quickly and uh, they've been here forever yeah seriously it, it, it most of bob folded into nc didn't they yeah but not directly nc actually fought IT Alliance, which was the remnants of Bob, uh, at a certain point, they duked it out yeah, really hard. Yeah, that's true. A couple of fights. And .exe, right. Yeah. And uh, Bob, those corporations went over to, uh, well, I think they kind of went through Raiden. Um, Rekoku went to PL. But the other ones went to a, a group called 401k, was there. And it was, the, it was like a retirement alliance. And they stayed in there for a while. And then when that folded... They folded into NC Dot, and that's when um, three out of the four Bob corporations ended up in NC Dot. And then there was a short time, not that long ago, where Rekoku fell out of PL for inactivity, and they fell into NC Dot. So you actually had all four corporations from Bob in NC Dot, and then there was a disagreement with Vince and uh, the CEO who wrote something privately that leaked uh, disparaging Vince and Vince threw them out. <laughs> so that was that. The reunion of Bob is still incomplete. Meryl, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't Miami like extremely famous for being like the place that people retire to? 
Uh, East Coast people retire there. Yeah. So like the New York money men will go there. Um, I'm just thinking you should really make a Miami Vice alliance in EVE where everyone that wants to like retire can go to and we can use all the fucking memes from Miami Vice. <laughs> Including the soundtrack, right? That's the big one. Yeah, of course. That's, yeah. that's a given. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. Um, all right. So Sorry. that's all right. That's... Um, and they, that's one of the battles that was going on yesterday. Uh, we're going to look through EVE forums and seeing what's up. There's some interesting stuff, though. Um, we'll get to it a little bit later that Noisy Gamer is writing about in his blog. And we were talking to him yesterday. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting stuff. But first, let's look at the uh, forums here. And again, we see Exumer Pilots on sale. Uh, Citadels, Eve Classic, uh, that always comes up every once in a while. People want to go back to the beginning of Eve with a clean slate, and that's unlikely because you can't wipe out that much history, right? People have been playing a long time. There's an intact history, and if you reset the server in any way, that it erases all that. But, but really, the the other thing is, you you really had something like that with Blackout, and people didn't really like it that much because Classic Eve would mean there's no sob. You just go and fight in space. So who knows? Um, companion careers for exploration. This is interesting. I've been trying to decide how to branch out my exploration career. And I'm really enjoying exploration to the point that if I can, I'd like to eventually be kind of known for it. I really like that. The people trying to distinguish themselves in EVE Online. And part of that is as an explorer. Uh, and Katya Sea is probably the going to be the legendary explorer of Eve Online since she traveled to every system that is available to travel to, including wormholes, and did it all without dying. And uh, CCP was so delighted by that story they made a giant statue of her um, in her home system. But I like that there's people like uh, following in her footsteps. Okay, that's something to read later. Um, this is interesting for those that don't know. I'm looking at Character Bazaar, Private Sale, Agreed Upon In-Game. What do you think that means, Caleb? Sorry, I was chit-chatting in uh, Twitch chat. Oh, I see. Yeah, sorry. The retirement I... home idea. I really wanted to fucking have. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, 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 Character Bazaar, I, I didn't think we did that anymore. Don't we have injectors? Can't we do our drugs? Mm, yeah, but this is um, this is an interesting thing that used to exist. It doesn't exist anymore as much. But whenever you were to agree upon selling a character, you always had to make a public statement. It's almost like a doing business as ad yeah. in the newspaper when you create a business. It's part of the required law to show uh, a third party external timestamp on when the transaction happened. And you have the same thing in EVE Online. Even if you were to agree to this in-game, not through the forums, you still have to publish something that says private sale agreed upon. And that's what that yeah, is. Yeah, and, and usually it's uh, also to make sure that uh, that you don't get in trouble with uh, team security, right? Yeah, CCP authorities, when they need to crack down, they can see a timeline on when the character switched hands to somebody else. Otherwise, you have no case. They'll assume that you were the guy holding the character when the character did something it shouldn't have been doing. Uh, new player focus dailies and foray of uh, that's players uh, features and ideas. So we'll skip that. But that's always interesting if you're putzing around. Some good stuff goes in there. Assembly hall one year subscription. If you have a gold bar in one country. Uh, okay. Uh, that's probably something about <laughs> monetary exchange in real life through Eve Online. So we'll skip that one and. Uh, okay. Anyway, so you guys need to go to, if you want to do what we're doing, um, you're going to want to go to the latest on EVE Online forums and check those out daily. See what goes on. Okay, let's have a look at Reddit. Um, oh my god. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, oh my god. Um, what we do here is we take Reddit r slash Eve, since that's the most popular one. We, we select 
not the most recent or the hottest ones, we select the top, T-O-P, and that gives us the top stories of a certain time period, and we do the top stories of today, and that gives us basically the last 24 hours of EVE Online, and then we look at the first three or four stories since they're sorted by popularity. Um, I'll just read some headlines here from this. It's uh, harder for veterans, easier for new players. Actually, let's look at that. Because... <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. You notice if you take the V out of R Eve, it's just re. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Lux? Yeah, good. Uh, all right. So that was just a cartoon, which allows people to comment on 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 the the meme itself and what it's supposed to represent. Let's see what else we have here. Again, in um, in in Reddit's defense, right? That is the one thing you can actually go to Reddit for the the the, the memes and the horrible fucking propaganda and shit like that. It is literally Eve Chan. Yeah, four Chan, eight Chan. Now is the thing, right? Ooh, dark territory. Um. Okay, and then. Who else checks here daily, hoping for some awesome update from CCP? Uh, that's a question. Uh, what have you learned from running a new player corp, or what I have learned from running into corps? There's a few interesting things in here. What happened to the 07 show? Uh, that's, you know, CCP's had many shows over the years. They had Eve TV, uh, uh, and that had all of one episode. Then you had the 07 show, and that had, mm, I think it had a good year and a half of running. So maybe like it was folded months. into that new thing, right? What what's it called, Lux? The dev blog the, the, or the no the the, the small videos that called something I can't remember the name, but there was just one for September, right? Yeah, not the dev blog. It's called like development today yeah. or something. You mean the scope videos? The 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 one that uh, uh, Falcon just did. Oh yeah, those things in the launcher. Yeah. Eve those? Pulse, thank you. Pulse. Nice to have chat. Yeah, chat really helps out. Let's check out what's going, Eve Pulse. Was there a new one that came out? Well, let's go to this old one and then hit, um, hit Eve Online and then check that playlist. Go to the playlist and Eve Pulse. And the latest one. Yeah, uh, still a September yeah. release, which we already covered. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's what the 07 show became. It was uh and I think these are fantastic. Uh it's usually just a few it's not a variety show like the 07 show was. The 07 show had a lot more players doing stuff and it was a little bit of a talk show and they did interviews with ccp guys and they did it in a little studio but this is i think these are superior in that they're really just getting to the information and putting it out um and there's no there's no gimmicks to it it's really just well there's a few that they acted out but um anyway these these feel a lot more like a video game actually quite well done um i forget the name of the ccp guy that does it He's the nicest guy in the world does all these videos and then of course falcon uh is in front a lot yeah and then there's bloopers at the end of falcon uh getting all tongue twisted so it's not just me um so those are wow we should do that bloopers <laughs> the bloopers are all, <laughs> all after each episode <laughs> The bloopers are all part of the presentation. There's no taking that. No, out. we made an entire fucking promo video of that. That was so good. All right. So a new, another one is uh, when you quit Eve before the era of chaos, but decide to log in and have to spend all day patching for some reason. And something about the Sinos being nerfed. All right. Enough of that. Dotland, real quick, let's check out what's going on in the most violent regions in space. Uh, most violent regions in the last three hours. So, uh, continues to be a lot of action in Detrid. Uh, again, that's where the war between 
Winter Coalition and Legacy Coalition is, uh, that's its uh, hot zone, I guess. Hey, thanks for the subscription there, seriously. Appreciate that, it's five months. Um, catch, which is interesting, Catch is uh, Brave Territory. Um, well, actually, that's not unusual. That's also been kind of a target for people, especially with bombers going through wormholes. You have Ethereum Reach and Lakavala, uh, Kalavala, Kalavala Expanse. Kalavala. Kalavala Expanse, thank you. Uh, that is um, Horde Territory, and there's a couple of groups there that are, I think, being attacked by Horde uh, occasionally. And then you get to Venal, uh, and Venal is where NC Dot is attacking, or actually Tinal Venal is attacking Darkline in that area. So that's all the north, and that's NC Dot attacking Dead Coalition. So those are your hot zones uh, going on right now. Okay, I wanted to look at market news real quick. Can we do that? There was a couple things. If you want people to start crying, sure. Why would they be crying? What do you think? It's dead, Jim. <laughs> You're talking about Plex? It's flatline. Everything is just we talking about boring. Plex? Yeah, Plex yeah. is just steady at 3.6. Oh, Lich Grave is here. How's it going, Lich Grave? What's up? Yeah, you take this one, Lich Grave. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want me to say? Plex is, Plex is uh, it's evening out. It's just how it is. But notice how it's... This is So this is actually something really interesting. Is that it's evened out, but blackout's over. So why isn't it shooting up to the high? To you know why? Why hasn't it fully recovered? Right? Why isn't it? Why is it still not at four uh, four mil each? And it's a. Uh, it's really interesting, and I, I don't really know the explanation other than. Uh, no not, volume. No, all the, the, the what what I'm thinking is that the people, not all the people have come back, and not all the farms have reactivated. So it's like, it's just going to be, or maybe they have, and that was just how inflated it was. So this is where it's, this is where the nominal is. And as it inflates again, because people, you know, because all the farms start getting made again, it just keeps going up and up and up. It's hard to tell. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> well, the volume did is you way guys, off. Did you guys see that uh, Hilma announced a Korean localization that's going to be done like by the end of this year? So that's oh, wow. potentially new players there. That should that should have made the price of Plex go up because of speculation, though. Yeah, well, I think people people sometimes just overestimate the power of, spe of speculators and and investors, quote unquote, um, in Eve. I mean, this is obviously one of those examples. We all, according to the idea of that, um, we should be we should be seeing price skyrocket for ISK. We should be seeing injectors skyrocket, but they're they're kind of just floating. I'm scared of all these new people that they are trying to target because I I, I know that Koreans have such a high tolerance for actual sweat shopping that. Grind is not nothing to them. They can grind like crazy people, which you can see if you go and play Black uh, Black Pearl. Uh, Black Pearl Desert, is, yeah, no. Yeah, Black Desert, it, it's that's crazy. Just, uh, and that actually brings up a really interesting point with, uh, we'll see how that impacts the uh, the market because in Black Desert, I mean, everything is kind of designed around that, right? Designed around that 24-hour endless grind. And okay. here's a game that, you know, Eve, here's a game that, has now, broken faucets. It's it, exactly right. Yep. So it's like where that twenty-four hour thing is like. Uh, hold on. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. If if ever they needed to fix those faucets, now would be a good time. Really, this also has the added opportunity of creating more destruction because you have an entity that has no alliances would most likely ally with itself, similar to what we've seen with the Chinese, and. It will effectively create its own stance within the game world. Test has already set them to blue before they've even got on the server. Oh well, yeah, because that's test. <laughs> <laughs> no, no well, shot at test. I love test. I was part of test, but it's just funny because we've already developed this whole blue donut thing. But but 
as the Chinese, the, the, the Chinese and the Koreans and, and quite a lot of, of the Eastern people are very tribal, right? Even more so than, than, than the rest of the world. So it's interesting to see if that might actually bring some, some bad blood and some strife. Yeah, we can hope. All right. Something else to look at. This is kind of cryptic and interesting. Uh, you have Damien Jaeger on Twitter ask, or saying, uh, this new video, face capture technology, when can players use it? And he uh, marks Hilmar. Ooh. We can make cool tutorials, storylines of our own, soda speeches, that's State of the Alliance speeches. Make it happen. And... Hilmar says, and he, what he's referring to at the end of the latest scope video is you can actually see the reporter lean forward into the camera and he's all animated and everything. And it's, it was a real, real Easter egg shock when that, when you saw that. And so Hilmar replies, small steps, stay tuned. Uh, oh my is, God. Are we going to get motion capture Jovian? Which is, which is pretty is... cryptic, but my God, the dimensions of, the dimensions of, um, what immersion that that would bring forth if you had Triglavians uh, able to uh, you, you had more videos of Triglavians and uh, humans actually being animated that would that would be Can you imagine the state of the Goonian address being delivered like that Can I just say that if if they start doing this I'm just going to start screaming where's the legs <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, Zanurio, his pet peeve was that all the all the female legs have high heels. So where are the flats? Where are the flats? Anyway, that's that's a pretty interesting bit of news. But I wanted to take this time. Well, we're gonna have a short show because we've been having long ones to go look at the nosy gamer. The nosy, nosy gamer blog. Are you gonna uh, moonwalk on this one, Meryl? <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked his article about the immersion conduits and his experience with them. Yeah. Uh, well, he's put out a new article since this last one. Let's see what the one before that. The Triglavians as a playable race. Okay, yeah. So I remember the last one. Then he puts out this one. It's really interesting. This is the one I want to talk about. The myth of migrating bots. Now, as you know, there was uh, some... Talk about how the player count during Blackout was falling, and you had uh, players leaving the game in droves. Therefore, CCP, you need to turn it around. And one of the things that people would say was, "Well, you have to look at the bots. They they took out forty three hundred bots, so that would include some softness in the PCU numbers because those bots that are usually on all day long are off, and that's forty three hundred bots that are gone." And that was just one month, not at all. That was thousands each month that they were taking out. Yes. Well, it was like 2,000-ish in the months before. And yeah. then July it went down to, what, 1,000 or 100? I don't know. Arendus was pointing this out. And then they had this huge July with a lot of... Um, well, this is when... July is, I believe, the month where the, the player peak concurrent users, the PCU count went down dramatically, is it? I think it was. And that's the same time that you had the um, PCU drop, probably because a lot of bots were eliminated that month, I think. And so the point is, people who didn't like the explanation of bots um, being the reason the PCU dropped, said the bots actually just went to high sec, right? Because we know, because we track them, and we know bot corporations, and uh, we track them, and they just moved their organizations to high sec. And this was just kind of put out there as if it was true. And uh, I think Noisy Gamer looks into this with some analytics and uh, pretty much debunks that theory. He talks about how much botting was going on before. I wouldn't say botting is this, this is PVE regional activity. So this is not botting, but this is just overall activity. And Delve is way over here at the very top with um, trillions, it looks like. Uh, over, I don't even know how to read the scale, but 6,000 billion. So that's like 6 trillion. And you have Branch, which is pretty amazing. And that is... 
branch would be like a dead coalition, right? Or, or actually Ranger Regiment, which are a Chinese group uh, and some Russian groups up there. <clears throat> and they're ratting like crazy. And then you have uh, Detroit, which is uh, Fraternity in Winter Space, Esoteria, which is um, Legacy Space. And, and then down here you have some honorable mentions, Aquarius, Fountain, those are wrapped around Delve. So Delve is massive and has some fall off into Aquarius and Delve. Then after, he goes ahead and looks at, um, well, then he shows you the, um, the after of how much that fell. And uh, it fell like dramatically, right? And so you would think that means that uh, those guys went somewhere else. Uh, but then he looks at high sec and he doesn't see any notable increase. It's the same systems that were making money before blackout that were making money after and no appreciable difference. So he basically comes to the conclusion here. He says, I may not have all the answers, but I am sure of one thing. I have a basis for stating that bots didn't fill up high sec and overrun the place. While we know from anecdotal reports uh, that bots moved to high sec to set up shop, they didn't make enough to impact. They didn't make enough of an impact to show up on a monthly economic report. So I thought yeah. that was a pretty interesting um, analysis with some data behind it to kind of take that narrative and give it some perspective. I just like the graph. The, the you whole just... you, you see everyone up there, and then. Afterwards, it's just delve hanging. It's like, where did everyone go? Where did who go? Yeah, you, you just don't see the activity that was going on in some of the NoSec regions being transferred onto the HiSec regions. Whether or not the bots went there or not, they weren't making an economic impact in terms of mind value or bounties. That is really amazing, isn't it? Like Branch, Detroit, Soteria, all these groups just collapsed. And we know that... Um, what was it? Uh, was it Decline or it, I don't know? Uh, there was a graph that showed just how hard uh, Nullsec ratting had been hit by blackout in the north, and it really crushed it to just about nothing. And then yeah, this, the acti yeah. activities just turned to nothing overnight. It's just the lights went off on the map for those regions when it came to NPC ratting activity. It was it was really stark. Yeah, they always yeah. seriously like that drunk guy at a party that will be the last to actually discover that everyone's fucking left. Everybody passed out or went home, and he's still like, "What's up?" Um, you could completely turn off the servers, and it would take them a while to actually figure out what happened. Uh, Why is the login not working? Hi XY, thanks for the follow, the subscriptions, um, and hello, hate, hate less gaming. So. It is interesting, yeah, that Delve was way up here in the 5 trillion area, and the mining was up there in the 5 trillion area. Uh, and then after Blackout, uh, it only falls to the four, 4 trillion area, and everybody else is just gone. <laughs> like they just yeah, on, yeah, only 4 trillion-esque. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, they didn't go to high sec, it looks like. So what that tells me, and this is why it's important, like this, like, so what, who cares? Well, this is why it's important. Uh, a lot of, if the, if the bots didn't really migrate over to high sec or, or they're not functioning and they're not turned on, because obviously you're not going to have a bot on that's not doing anything. It's either going to be working or it's going to be off. Then of course you're going to see the PCU drop by a substantial amount. So I think this next episode, the, um, the next metrics that he talks about here, I haven't read this one yet, and I think he's talking about RMT. And But I've had conversations with Noisy, and it was, it was really interesting, some of the data that he's coming up with on his spare time, uh, that it really looks like about 15% of players closed accounts and possibly left. And again, they may close five of their six accounts and keep the one account and wait out blackout, which is very likely. Uh, or... They may have just closed all six accounts taken off or just closed half of them. There's any combination of things that can happen. But basically, players accounted for about 15%. Uh, percent. Brave and uh, Goonswarm, I think, said it was about 20% for them. 
and um, talking with uh, Fed Up, they lost about 15%. So anywhere between 15 and 20% were some of the players that left. And then when Blackout was lifted, you had the opposite happen. And I hadn't actually heard of people leaving the game after Blackout was changed. But now I know that, um, at least from one person, that he lost uh, a, a good half of... Was it half? It was, it was a large percentage. 15 actual people out of a group of uh, like 40 or 50 um, just gone because they came back for this blackout and they took off. Um, and then I've heard this, the opposite is true too. Uh, Fed Up had not all their guys come back, but some of their guys come back. So it's really weird how these PCU numbers are moving around. Um, what, what I want to imp- imp- what I want to give to the audience is some appreciation for how complex the PCU number can be. You can't just look at it and assume you know that the game is going in the wrong direction because it's dropping. Uh, that actually may be the right direction. It just looks wrong because it looks like people are leaving, but that may actually be bots. And um, what you want to look at is you want to look at how many people are in space and doing things. That is the bottom line for EVE Online. And for us, it's anecdotal information. CCP has all the data. They know how many times a scram goes off, for instance. But um, do not do not be afraid if you see numbers drop and do not be too excited if you see those numbers pop up again. You have to moderate your thinking about what that number actually represents. Okay. Anybody got any wisdom to impart? Okay. I deliberately stayed out of this topic because yep. I don't want that's to good. talk. That's good. I rage hard when it comes to bots. Just going to say. Yeah, that's good. Well, right, people- I'm just going to I'm just going to put out there that um in spite of whatever is going on, Eve is what you make it. So, if you, you know, we we make our own content. If the PCU is down, find something to do. We find something to do. All right, looking at uh, the market again, I wanted to go back to uh, Plexus Soft. Um, it looks like Injectors. Am I in the wrong one? Yeah. Injectors really flatlined. There doesn't seem to be much of a difference. Plex flatlines, Injectors flatline. It's just how it is. Yeah, there's a bit of a lag effect usually, and I do see there's some softness in orders. So you can see like maybe uh, in July, the orders were about four and a half um thousand and now they're at like uh 3200 so uh, there's definitely there's definitely less demand for that there's definitely less demand for plex I and mean, those things are are facts i don't i don't think that's true if you look at the bottom there is a small dip in in amount mm-hmm. consumed in the pri- if you look at the bottom even in plex if you look at the bottom where it shows the volume per day it, it didn't really change that much what i think is happening is we had a negative is coefficient this last uh, month and a lot of the people who buy injectors who buy plex are you know it's it's a predominantly you know large group of of veteran players um and bots and and null sec guys and so because of this negative ISK coefficient, there's a possibility that that's actually causing this to even out because, I mean, if ISK isn't being put in, then the pl- the price can't inflate. And if it's negative, then the price either stays the same or goes down. Um, so that I, I don't actually know what that is, but I'm looking at the volumes and you have like... It's basically how much ISK was put into the game, right? Because even though... So even though the, we have a huge amount of ISK in the game and that floats around a whole bunch of people, once the mission runner sells that ISK to whoever has the injector, that person who has the injector who sold the injector now has that money, right? So the mission runner doesn't. So he has to go out and he has to go mine a whole bunch. He has to go farm a whole bunch of uh, missions and or he has to go farm a whole bunch of rats to get that ISK back. And so, but if that amount of people got reduced, which it obviously did, then the amount of people purchasing Plex, buying injectors, the amount of money buying Plex and buying injectors went down. And it I guess it's it's caused this stagnation bit happening. But that's just a 
of, mm. uh, off the off the top of my head hypothesis. Okay, well, without making any uh, assumptions for myself, the uh, I don't know why less Plex is being bought or traded, but the volumes are down. That is what is a fact. And uh, I but there's you know tune into the economic show and uh, and find out why. <laughs> Um, but there we're at like 1.6, 1.7 down to 1.2, if not lower to just over, uh, 1 million trades on volume. And I don't know what the price is doing. It seems the volume has been dipping for a long time now, or at least, uh, since what looks like August or maybe even end of July. Oh, hi there, old Mecca. Hey guys. Well, Mecca, can you speak up a bit? You might be a little quiet. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I'll turn you up just in case. Okay. How are you doing? What's new with you? Well, just came to US and uh, from Turkey. Um, Welcome just, back. Uh, studying. Thank you. Studying and getting back to real life. Yeah. Was it? Did you take a break from the game or something? There was something like that? Yeah, you were discussing Plex and I'm like, Oh, I just unsubbed the 75 account. <laughs> well, that might have something to do with it. Then. I'm going to blame you for the drop in Plex. Yeah. Uh, 75, that's a lot of accounts. Is that what you normally play with? Well, uh, most of them are campers or excavator stealers. Right? Why'd you unsub 75 accounts? Well, typically, I camp with 45 of my accounts, like AFK camp, and the mm. rest is uh, pushers. And I just have 10, like, main, quote-unquote, main accounts. But, um, so you, why, you, you don't have a use for them anymore? Is that why? Oh, uh, I took a break until after Vegas. I need to focus on real life. Stuff. Oh, okay. I see. So it doesn't have anything to do with what CCP is doing. It's your real life that... You need yeah, to put stuff yeah, on yeah. For me, yeah. But I know Marshy has unsub because uh, they took away blackout, and he has like he un unsubbed the uh, two hundred fifty account. Two hundred fifty accounts. Yikes! That makes up for a lot of people. Uh, but yeah. he he unsubbed because he didn't like that blackout was lifted. Yeah, basically, and um, he he makes rash decisions. I'm trying to convince him back. Well, maybe he'll come back. I don't know. What What do you think the Sino changes are doing since we, we don't have a lot of information on it yet? I think they're great. Uh, my people say they are great, but that's our end of things, right? Because Sino changes took away from one kind of player and gave it to another kind of player. So, um, of course, it's going to be controversial and um, the the testimony will differ. Uh, depending on who you are talking. That was it. Ah, that's the end, end of your comment. Sorry, I was looking well, something up. It, uh, well, we killed like a bunch of stuff. Uh, in the first day, we killed a Titan. We killed a bun bunch more Titans. And I'm pretty sure like people roaming low sec are now having it better because you know which ships are going to um, are possibly can possibly sign on and drop capitals on you so you avoid them and you're mm -hmm. fine from the capital menace you know yeah. uh, and that that probably helped a lot of small gangs and I'm re I'm hearing reports as well and I don't know I think uh, we had a couple of fights with escalations um, so so far we didn't have any big problem but also um, we we have to wait until some very large farts, fights transpire to know whether uh, whether the EHP basically the EHP and sur survivability of the recons is enough to ensure capital escalations still happen so we people keep dropping stuff on each other in big fights. Yeah, you say EHP, the effective hit points. Yeah, like tank basically. So because this, the recon will die very fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, no. Has to survive long so, enough to bring in the ships that it's calling. Yeah, so basically how much is the window? I think like 15 seconds should be fair, but I'm not sure if the recons should uh, will survive 15 seconds or not. So maybe CCP can think about tweaks in there. And if it turns out that like 
escalation don't don't just happen it's very hard to do escalations now then people will think about like um tank gear signals right maybe a hick maybe dreads i don't know who knows well hick has the ability to tackle as well so it could tackle then call in help and i wonder if that's um it seems like that's their next step if they need to increase it but but that would make that ship pretty important wouldn't it it's already important but it would make it even more important yeah i guess um well i mean yeah so far i my position is just wait and see until escalations happen mm -hmm. if you if you big big fights happen and if they're if they turn out to be very hard or if people find it hard to conduct them then we can go back and think about tankier sign of shit Maybe yeah. people should just adapt to the change and light their sinos at range instead of trying to light them on top of the enemy fleet. Yeah, if, if it's like a hundred or something, the dreads kill, can still blap it really fast. And, um, and if it's further away, then you lose from your own DPS, right? You can't just sino 500 away and bring in your stuff. Yeah, we'll see how they adapt. The these I think people are still working out uh the Sino situation. But I wonder how it affects um what they were meant to affect, which was the the umbrellas and the uh massive amount of money making that goes on under the umbrellas. Well, do you, do you know if CCP regards being able to have a panic module affect someone lighting an industrial sign was that intended was that discussed at all or were they just unaware that that was a possibility well i don't know how i can dance around the nda and talk about what's discussed but um you can't so don't yeah okay <laughs> um my own opinion about that is so industrial signos are for industrials right so i i don't see a huge deal uh, if people panic on industries, and it, it has to be on an asteroid or on, a, on an anomaly, mining anomaly or something, and, and then it can only bring in jump freighters, right? Well, and black ops. Yeah. Oh yeah, black ops, and yeah, maybe that's. But then, yeah, it doesn't drop capitals. So as long as well, the black the, ops, black ops come out light signer, but then. You know, the Black Ops is vulnerable and tankless, so you cannot panic it. Yeah. Well, it's, basically it's just an umbrella with more steps, right? But both steps are a little costly. Every time you use it, you're going to lose, I assume. Well, actually, the T1 hauler isn't that big a deal, but the uh, the blobs is expensive. So if you're Yeah, really, part of, part of what's thing... intended is like uh, having these sign-on changes, low, very, very low VHP, so... If you light Sino, you bring in friends, at least you lose your recon or uh, blobs, and that's that's at least one kill mail insured. Yeah, and as I long can. as these things aren't tanked very well, like they're not super resistant to damage, you can actually take them off the field by destroying them quick enough to interfere with the ability of bringing in uh, the bigger ships. So this is a strategic component to it. I mean, if you did have a tankier Sino, I think you'd have to balance it out by having the um, jumping to Sinos have more of a spool up time as a trade off. The, what appears the, odd to I, me. I just want to cl clarify about the blops. Like, I don't, I don't think that you can call in a blops with an industrial. Yes, sign. you can. It is can. in the patch notes. Yeah, they changed it at the they, very last they second. Just added it. Yeah. No, very, it's yeah. well, it's been there since the since the industrial came in. But yeah, it, it was, was really, a surprise. It was weird, and then it was verified. Yep. It only came and, in during and not, the patch notes. not a force recon, just nope. the blobs. Just to just it the, says it, black, it says black it can bring in jump freighters and black ops. It specifies those two. Think of it as hierarchical, right? And first so, uh, hierarchy. In the bottom level, you have carriers and capitals that can jump one Sino. In the second uh, layer, you have jump freighters that can jump to two Sino. And then in, in, the to the, in the top layer, you have blobs that can jump to three so you Whoa. So now you have, you have a blockade runner that can fit an industrial Sino and a cloak, a Kovops cloak, and can call in a Black Ops. Yep. Well, yeah. I mean, well, they already could have called in a Black Ops with the covert Sino. 
blockade runners also eat their partners really well uh, and that's pack a been, wrap ton of resistance. That was preserved in the new Sino world, the new Sino meta. Well, they they still can light a black ops or a black, uh, cover up, cover ops close. Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually just the uh, the deep space transport or the yeah the deep space transport can now do what you just described. The point is that they can use one Sino and a cloak because if they were using the the covert Sino, then they couldn't call in a jump freighter. But now the industrial Sino can call in both. Correct. Yeah. Well, yeah. And uh, the uh, yeah, that's correct. So now they can call in both and have a cloak at the same time. Well, my my thing that I want to ask on Mecha about is did they realize that you could have the DST and those sorts of ships affected by the panic module because they are industrial ships and light a Sino at the same time? Yeah, that is an interesting question. Yeah, I, I, I just don't know. I mean, this is a... This is not a super important question in in regards of NDA, but I still don't want to dance around it and then tell you what they know or they don't know. That's yeah, fine. Fair, fair enough, then. What I find interesting about all of these conversations is that we seem to go, go about it with the assumption that the enemy will Sino, as if, like, we are affected by the Sino changes, but the enemy is not. And I just think that there's going to be more encounters that don't involve Sinos. Uh, correct. And um, that's the thing. I think more encounters is the key word there. You're going to have people taking fights because they know they can't be escalated upon. Uh, that's something that's overlooked. I, we were talking about this at one point, that if you look at all the changes, yes, they're meant to disrupt uh, the safety and money making of big operations in NullSec. But if you look at all the changes and you reverse them, they're actually made for creating more conflict. And I think that's pretty interesting. Also, I mean, oh, go ahead. There's an there's an interesting equation there. So, if you increase the risk and keep the reward the same, then you're gonna get less faucets, but you're not gonna get more people in space, and you're not gonna get more explosions. So that's that was the argument uh, against blackout, right? You don't get more. It, it turned out that the explosions didn't increase. It turned out fight didn't, fights didn't increase, but then the economy wasn't checked. So. Um, for example, CCP could just do like uh, like quadruple the bounties under blackout, and take and then that would co cause people to maybe log back in and uh, undock, mm -hmm. you know, and then more explosions. But then you would get back the, to the unhealthy economy situation. So it's kind of like um, a, a, it, it's it's an equation with three variables, right? So and then the sino thing thing is the same. I don't think it's gonna cause more necessarily more supers dying more titans dying but then it's it's going to keep uh, the capital farming in check and because by requiring um more effort and caref caref carefulness from the side of the capital farmer or boson farmer or like um super farmer right so at the end of the day um i don't think it's going to be like more supers will die because sino changes but what uh, the benefit for for the game is the faucets one hand and then the second it's like right now it's like it's worth attacking every single capital be because you don't you don't know whether they're going to screw up and uh, bringing help or not there, previously it's if it's if it's a capital if it's under the umbrella it's just it's he's going to say no and uh, then you, it's not even worth trying right Right now, it's worth trying, and maybe that's that's the key for uh, more encounters. Not necessarily more kills, but more encounters, right? Because now you're going to try, at least give it a try. Whenever you find the super, whenever you find the carrier, you give it a try. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Maybe you get a recon or blobs, and that's good. I mean, if they wanted to address the faucets, why didn't they just change how the anomalies pass out rewards? They, they could have swapped from bounties to the system they use for the Triglavian sites, which is seven different ways of rewarding the player for doing it, and not just flat ISK creation. Wouldn't that have been a more direct approach to bounties than Blackout? Well, in my, my own opinion about this is... Um, 
So remember, Triglavians, they have their own stuff that, that is on demand, right? Triglavian ships, Triglavian modules, and so on and so forth. And they are getting farmed by not a great majority of the game. Uh, so the farmers, maybe 10%, maybe, I don't know the exact number, but 15% of people, maybe 5% farms them. If you want to switch Nalsec, uh farm, like because most of the people do that, most of the people in the game, for do or a lot of people do anomaly running right if you if you switch their reward to if you switch their rewards to say lp something like lp then you're yeah. gonna reduce whatever you're gonna like tank whatever the value of that lp stuff that uh, you get from from anomalies so you're gonna like those those modules will suddenly become much more affordable much more uh, cheaper because everyone farms them a lot of people farms them Part of the reason why uh, LP is valuable be- is because not a lot of people farms them, right? And if you and there's a lot of people who want to farm in Nalsec. So if you give them LP, then you're going to tank. It's going to be self-defeating. There, it's not going to be rewarding. But if you give them, if you give them like something like Triglavians, then you have to ha- have like this entire line of items and ships that are on demand. So people buy them and people buy them for a good price so they can exchange for, for that for ISK. And for like maybe 5-10% of farmers, Triglavian stuff is enough. But for the entire NALSEC, you you would have to have like an entire different kind of ship line. Well, ma- not, not necessarily. If you look at the Triglavians, some of their red loot is actually purchased by NPC by orders, much like the um, wormhole loot. Which but is still, better, no than, it's still better than different. actually solving it with a fucking bind on pickup thing like LP. That's horrible. That's not different than like blue loot and uh, like NPC buy orders. They're not. It's not different than spawning isk in the, in the game in it's terms of. In, it's different in the kind loot. that you have to actually fly around with it. So there is a risk added. Yeah, and it, but mean, it also means you have to pick it up, which is quite difficult in a Titan. Sure, but we're yeah, we're talking about kind of bulky too. We're talking economically, right? Economically, if you uh, give uh, blue loot or Tirglevin stuff to people, it's not different than spamming ISK itself, right? It's very different. It's very different. If, if you can actually have it flown around in space, if you, if you have to add fucking labor to get it picked up and to move it through space where it's at risk, of course, it's not a major risk. And eventually, the faucet is still available, but you're adding some, some steps in between that's at least an improvement to a printer that goes directly to your wallet. Yeah, sure, I would agree with that. I just think it's gonna, it's not going to solve four sets if you do that. That's that's well, it's well, step let's... one, right? Because if you wanted to change this and and tweak uh, the the actual faucet, tweaking it on the spawn of the demand for for the loot, that would actually be very valuable because you could shift it around geographically so the the request and the and, and 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 the demand is still there from ccp so you can still get your isk but you need to kind of chase the the, the guy that gives you the money well the thing is about um the red loot and its mechanic or its function when it comes to triglavian stuff it's about a third maybe of the value that you pull out of uh, the abyss when it comes to without jackpots. And it's about a little under a half of the loot that you get in uh, invasions. And so this is really important because to Omeka's point, you don't want just unlimited amount of value. You want it to be so that as the demand for these products go up, its value goes down, which make, makes it so that the value of the, of the task of farming it also goes down. But the thing is, is that if you just let it be all, you know, zero point condensate, nitrogen 10, then when there's enough Triglavian ships, that will completely collapse and it'll be completely worthless. And then you can't run that at all for money. The point, the, the so point is that when you're printing, when you're printing is directly into so the what, wallet, this is extremely so what they're doing friendly, is, right? What they're doing is, is they're making it if so half of asset, the value. Oh my gosh, dude. They're making it so half of the value is guaranteed. And then the other half is is flexible. So that yeah, way there's exactly. a baseline of like, it will be at least worth this much, but it could be worth more if not enough people are doing it. That's it. So when you look when you look at the emerging conduits, they don't actually pay bounties. They pay ISK on site completion. And it's basically like a small constant that you guarantee to get. And then you've got parts of it that are in LP. And then you've got parts of it that are in loot that, that basically responds to supply and demand. 
and then you've got some of it that's loot that is basically sold to NPCs at a fixed rate, but you're better off using it in the LP store. So it, it's got responsiveness to demand in there, and the anomalies bounties are really, really high. They're like the main forced in the game. The point is that they, that they can the, make it more the, responsive. The, the LP is pretty much an old bind on pickup uh, remnant that should really be removed or at least modernized. And it's printing directly into the wallet is really, really bad, right? So anything they do that's got to do with, say, red loot or blue loot or even payouts on on completion of something is something that can actually be turned and tweaked and be conditioned on other things. So all of this direction is better than what we have now. It's Which better in the sense that it's it's more content friendly. You kill a person, a bot, you get their isk, uh, right? So it's it's yeah, it's exactly. more and then you need to and they need to carry carry stuff. Maybe they carry stuff through wormholes. You kill ambush them in a wormhole chain, or you kill their blockade runner or um, DST or something, and then you get that money. And so it's more vibrancy. But in the sense that economically, people if as long as as long as people farm in Nalsec, it's gonna be uh, spamming is regardless of it's whether it's. Uh, like say green loot or just uh, spawning money in in wallet. The, the, the point is that if, if we if we decided to 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 push CCP to actually remove the flat disk payment completely tomorrow and change it all into some of these systems, that would actually be better for the entire economy. Not just because it, it adds a little bit of risk in the game, but also because every change will be almost a ghost change. You will not notice it, so you can't sit there and spreadsheet everything, and it will be extremely. Uh, anti-botting right because it all these steps are botting. yeah because they're, they're chaotic they're, they're, there's too many variables there's too many uh chains that you have to go through you have to to potentially trade with other players if the hand-ins was then also like locked into stations that you might have negative standing with so you need to find a player straw man to actually handle the trade all of these things would just add complexity which would be extremely good for the game and bots would completely die and for low sec, they could basically interdict all the trillions and trillions of bounties coming out of Nilsec. Because if it was an item that you had to sell in low sec or high sec, they would have a chance of capturing that value. Well, let's just keep in mind there are like faction warfare bots that the main uh, value is LP, and they they still manage to try and uh, like liquidate the LP and then sell it, and then uh, so it's not. Let's not let's let's be a, a bit careful about like what completely I mean, you, kills. You, you, you can't you can't interdict LP, right? You can interdict an item that's in someone's cargo hold. Um, LP is so much like down. It's no, just when you liquidate when you liquidate account. LP, like say a faction warfare LP, you get faction warfare items. You sink a bit isk. You sink a bit uh, requirement items there, like tags. And you get an item, and you have to carry that to Jita. And then right, but there's a difference. In the case of like blue loot or whatever, you have to move it from the location where you destroyed the thing to home. In the case of LP, you run the sites, and then you go to high sec, turn in the LP in high sec to get the items there, and then move it to Jita. Okay, so it's completely enough. safe. With, did you see well, what I mean? It's safe when well, you're traveling with yeah, it because it's, it's a like digital it. account. The moment you do that, pe- the alliances will just start buyback programs, and then people with G- jump freighters will carry it, and you won't see a lot of That's it. added content. That's not so a workaround. No, that's with... not an abuse. It's actually. A, I mean, a look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not necessarily, I'm not necessarily, I'm not against this idea. I'm just like smoothening what you expect from it, right? Because it's like yeah. you were talking like it's going to solve economics it's going to solve botting no it's a good idea but it's not going to it's not going to be like a remedy for all issues i agree it's not going to be a remedy i i I just to specify though just to clarify not a lot of faction warfare people uh, groups do uh really really good buyback programs and the reason why is because most of the income in faction warfare is from the bottom up right there's no way to tax lp so there's no way for the alliance to actually get money unless they have their own uh, money making programs outside of faction warfare yeah, I know, I know. I was talking about buyback programs in, in in terms of like say green loot, right? When when you have green loot, you have to sell it to. Gotcha. Uh, yep. Yeah. Tracking. By green loot, I just mean imagine like they introduce green loot. You have to sell to NPCs in low sec or high sec, and from and you get it from non sec. 
You keep saying green loot. I'm I'm going to take this as confirmation that the drifters are attacking. No, I just imagine the new kind of uh, color and loot because it's isk. I'm going to take that. Sure, as whatever. A... I'm excited for green loot. Let's let's get let's get excited for that. Yeah. Uh, faction loot already has a green thing in the corner, doesn't it? I know, but you get it from LP. Like it'd be cool if there's like a green drop that you sold the. Uh, corporations yeah, or whatnot. Anyway, loot is, green, is blue. Uh, Triglavian loot is red, and Drifter loot is green. It makes sense. I'm in. I think like generally a more more direct and genuine interaction with the loot fairy, and a loot fairy who says yes a little bit more, both in PvP and PVE, would be a good thing. And like more rewards are loot based overall. That is, uh, Ivena. How do you say your name? Yeah, something like that. Whatever people want to go with. I can't change it now. Ivanas, okay. So that's uh, your new uh, Tatagian stations, I think. Uh, and you've been hearing from Lux and uh, Olmeca, of course, uh, Caleb, uh, Ashtarathi, and I believe also... Um, where'd he go? Yeah, Hateless, I guess, is in there too. Yep, I'm here. Hi. Hi, it's nice to meet you too. All right. Well, um, thanks very much for stopping by on Mecca. We're going to wrap up the show. It's time to go. But uh, if you want to hear more about Talking in Stations, come Talking in Stations and listen to these guys in public chat where we talk about these things and more during the day. Um, let me... So, uh, Litchgrave, we're still making a decision on the show. Where are we with that? Uh, I'm just trying to get things set up. I still don't know how to stream to the channel. It's, it's okay. Do you want to stream at 10 a.m.? Like, sorry, uh, you want to stream in 30 minutes? Yeah, that, that sounds like a great idea. So you're not so rushed. Okay, so yeah. we'll go We'll go another few minutes, and then I want to tell you that we're going to have a new show. This is going to be its beta run, so keep expectations low on the graphics, but the information will be good, and Litchgrave uh, with his friend uh, Hateless will be talking about, um, well... Missions. Missions, yeah, Missions. some of this yep. kind of stuff. So maybe you guys can stick around and listen to that. This is our economic show that we want to get off the ground, talk about how you can make money in EVE Online. And we're talking about in-game money, not real money. Um, and uh, basically enhance your ability to get yourself all inventoried up. So we'll do that at the top of the hour. For now, we're going to give you guys another few minutes. I'm going to go off screen but uh, carry on if you guys want to for a few minutes, and then I'll come back and shut this, the stream off. Sound good? This is where all the offensive stuff goes. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm going to be I listening. Just ask you, I just want to ask you guys. I think uh, one of the – this economy stuff, uh, I think one of the things that, that is overlooked is the sink side, right? So the taxes have been increased, and there hasn't been a huge backlash. So maybe it's good to, like, introduce a few more sinks. and no. I think no, like <laughs> no, because it doesn't. It doesn't solve anything. You don't solve a, a broken faucet yeah. by making a bigger thing. It's just dumb. You actually I, do. I like it. I like it. I disagree with, with Caleb. The, Let's do it. The, the problem with ISK is inflation. So you you put in more ISK in the game, and not enough is removed. So if okay, you reduce the faucets, but you, one way to go about it is also increasing the sinks, right? And tax help have. Uh, so the more sinks you have, the more the more isk you have to hand out for rewards and exciting stuff right so mm -hmm. one thing i was thinking like maybe like like citadel charters or maybe um, uh, fuel. like we have fuel but imagine an isk sink as a as a citadel cost right so for example um employee wages or something you know well the point is that, that that you're pretty much arguing for the fact that this reason tax hike was a solution to the isk faucet which is completely wrong because the, the the isk faucet is broken everywhere in the game and adding a higher tax that's levied on people especially in high stake that's potentially new players that's just unfair that's oh. equivalent to a poll tax it's oh, just Mecca, dumb. 
Don't take it personally. For another topic. (laughs) Don't take it personally when he says that's just completely wrong. That's his way of saying like it might might not actually be that way. (laughs) Shifting the value from raw isk to materials might be a better solution than just looking at the faucets and the sinks, but making the materials more valuable and making them as they are with the triglavians and everything. The materials is what makes the isk. Nobody's giving you isk for the. you're, you're, You're making materials. You get isk for that instead of just being given is for nothing when you kill rat. I think the question becomes is where does the isk generator actually come from? Because you do need an isk generator. Yes. So I, the question I, is what what is that going to be? I agree with making everything else material based and this is something that's even CCP well, has talked about. The, so. the emerging conduits are quite clever in this. They they pay you out when you finish the site and that also solves the problem of going into certain sites and cherry picking the bounties out of them because it's payment on completion and that payment on completion is actually flat across other pilots as well so it encourages you to do the sites with other people and let's remember that the raw material faucets are also streaming way too high they're completely broken as well it's the anomalies and that's it yeah, and, and in these in these new sites, they still do have uh, you know an ISK faucet in the red loot and in the direct payouts. Yeah. But as we said, the red loot has to be moved around. Uh, there are a shocking amount of red loot gets sold in Jita for ninety three, ninety four, ninety five percent of its value, and is moved. Seriously, so so, absolutely, one hundred percent. People move billions a, a day, amount. billions a day, and all someone has to do is take. Uh, a you know a big ship, three jumps over in high sec to Valane and sell it to an NPC, and they do it, and and they just skim off the top every day, steady as a couple hundred million for very little effort. Uh, all of this is just adding to the lifeblood of the economy and having some of the value of doing the combat content be direct disc into your wallet some of it be this isk that has to be moved around and the rest of it being the materials is a nice balance so yes the isk does have to come from somewhere and i think that this is a very balanced solution for bringing it in speaking of moving stuff around did you give any more consideration to the idea of removing manual asset safety or mecca removing assets did you say remove yeah removing (laughs) manual asset safety uh, I've never argued for that actually. I had ideas for us and safety, but uh, my my own position is giving the fifteen percent tax to the attackers. Is so I don't wanna I don't wanna mild in it uh, or like make it worse for for the you know you know the main person who people imagines when uh, SS safety is removed we, we will get uh, harmed is the line member who goes AFK in Nalsec you know for for six months and comes back and. Everything is gone, right? So I don't want to make it harder for, for this person, but maybe uh, giving the asset safety to the attacker instead of the NPCs. And actually, speaking of sinks, this is a sink that uh, I'm offering that, you know, it, it oh. would remove the sink. But I, I, don't, I don't mean removing asset safety. I mean removing the ability to manually say, I want to move things right now into low sec oh, by fair pushing enough, fair a button. Enough. Right. I, I, I mean, I think the opposite should be done. I think manual asset safety should be the only one. I think once it's blown up, it should drop. But before that, you can flee like rats from a sinking Dude, ship. right? We shouldn't it's, be rewarding inactivity. Oh, that's, that's a reward. Well, again, that's like, it's, they, they'll, they'll say like, oh, think of the AFK line member. Right. I, I'm just saying, saying I think of a... Like I want, I want that act of betrayal, that silent betrayal. You know, the leader that's trying to hold the line while members are like openly supporting him, but quietly like squirreling all their stuff out of the out of the station. How about a compromise? Make the 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 cost different. What do you mean different? Well, it already kind of is. Yeah, it- that it's more expensive to say actively move than uh, passively, right? All right, I'm back. We got into uh, deving, so we're going to get out of the show. If you guys want to talk about <laughs> this kind of thing, do it yeah, on your own time. my fun matter all. You're out. We're going to uh, take off. Thanks for tuning in today. Stay tuned for 
uh, the Mad Isk Show, which is going to have a uh, focus on missions today, and that's going to start in just a few minutes. So uh, stick around. Litchgrave, uh, are you almost ready there? Yep. All right. Stick around for Mad Isk. This is going to be its uh, its beta premiere. Premiere. So we're, yeah. We're trying to tune things up and uh, stick around, figure out how to make some Isk inside this game of ours. Okay. We'll see you in just a minute. Thanks for showing up. Oh, we'll see you guys. Life on. See you guys.